Alright, I'm recording kind of in widescreen just because I'm going to probably chop something off and there's going to be a lot of moving parts. But since the last time we've seen, I realized I need to probably plug it into the laptop. I was trying to do it through the interface and I'm just not a professional yet. You can definitely do it though. But I got the Gerbil settings all loaded onto the black box. I have all the wiring all configured. I mean, it's just there right now. Um, I don't have the router on there yet. I'll put it on in a minute. But I have the laptop set up and I have open builds control. Here, I have the Hello World uh, dummy, or like the test file um, set. I've done a homing, it homes correctly, even though with that broken limit switch, it still is able to hit like the little switch. That's not the broken ones back there. But they're like five bucks, so I'm gonna order a few more of those to have on hand. Um, but once, if I would've, you know, followed the instructions and like updated the Gerbil settings before I started moving it around with this, uh, we wouldn't be in this situation. However, we're here, so. I have this little Hello World. It's gonna be about five inches by five inches. Uh, this is kind of cool. You can have millimeter mode or inch mode. Um, so I'm in inch mode, just made things a little easier for guesstimating. But I'm gonna run the first job. So I have the zero point set. We're gonna see if it, what it does. It's doing a thing. That's kind of cool. You can kind of like see what it's doing live here. Super anticlimactic, but you know, it's working. So I think I'm just going to let it run this thing and see how long it takes. I wonder if there's an estimated time. Maybe this bar at the bottom here. Yeah, right here. A 16 minute cut. I ain't gonna wait that long. However, it's moving. Things are happening. So I wanna get some wood. Uh, I got some carpet tape from Amazon. Somewhere. People say that this is the bee's knees. I don't know. We're gonna find out. Low key hoping it doesn't run over my laptop while I'm over here. I have some bits. I got a uh, spiral end mill. This little pack of just cheap bits because I figure I'm going to be eating through them. I have a V-bit somewhere, but can't find it. So, I also have this... I need to stop this. I also have this kind of in the works. I'm trying to build something that kind of holds my vacuum hose. I have my dust collector back there. And I got my two and a half inch hose for the spindle, so I'm still working with that. But I'm probably gonna put together something temporary and cut something, so I'll be back when that happens. All right, for this first cut, I have a piece of three quarter inch MDF. I put the carpet tape down on the back of it here. And kind of make it squared up here a bit. It's all in there. Now, I want to go get the XYZ probe. Crap. No, you know what? I don't need it. I'm going to try to get the laptop out, and we're going to see what we can do with this. Here we go. I'm looking like a complete idiot right now. But I want to turn the router on. All right, first issue, my Z stepper motor is slipping. Like the, the call it's spinning, but like it's not spinning. See like.
Maybe it didn't break. All right, so as I'm trying to tighten some stuff up, I realized that the little tiny grub screw kind of just disappeared. So I knew there was one in the kit somewhere, but I can't find that one. I probably threw it away because it's the tiniest little thing ever. Um, but I have some, like I said earlier, little tiny metric little bolts, and I'm going to try to jam something in there to hopefully grab grab something so I can keep printing, but I'll have to order some grub screws. So, let's see. This is an M3, I think. And it fits. Heck, I think I'm gonna need a little bit of a longer one. I thought this was gonna be too long. Unless, I think I might know what the problem is. I bet you there's not enough uh, lead there. So I need to go to the other side, loosen that lead screw up and pull this through. Cause I bet you that's what the issue is. All right, let me try that. Yeah, look at the other side. The bearings came out. So that grub screw wasn't tight enough. So it might actually be in there. So I pushed that over quite a bit. So let's see. I want to loosen up these and I'll pull this collar back and we'll see if the little grub screw comes out. That'll be nice if it was in there. So let's see what's in there. Hey, look what fell out. So I just pulled this collar back um, and then pushed the rod back. If you can see, there's barely any rod there. So if I put the other piece of the bearing back in. Uh, I'm going to use two hands for this. All right, so I have the other piece of the bearing back in. Now I got to go to the other side, put this little bearing back in. So it's pushed. I'm actually going to loosen up this because there's a little bit of play here. Back this out a little bit because I have to retension it. Come back over here. I'll put you on super view. Make sure all that junk's in place. And find the flat spot of the motor which is kind of at that angle right now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the grub screw in on the stepper and I'm pushing against the X axis so that way like the bearing's getting compressed. All right. All right, that's torqued pretty well. Now what I'm gonna do is take this grub screw, put it back on here. Actually tighten it up this time. Yeah, it's definitely engaging the threads. Snug that up pretty tight. Come back up to here. Use the 2.5 millimeter. We'll tighten up the thread one first. Then the one on the motor shaft. And maybe that grub screw just wasn't on a thread or it wasn't in between any threads at first. I don't know. We're gonna see. So we need the 2.5 still. We'll come back over here. We'll tighten this guy up. All right. All right, so that's tightened back up. Now, I guess we can start routing again. Let's see what happens. Oh, 
far off. Well, I would say it could have gone worse. It definitely could have gone worse. Uh, I think I scaled it too big for the piece of wood. I didn't really even make sure it fit fit all too much. I knew it wasn't going to fit too much, but yeah. And then this, it all shifting was, you know, obviously you saw that the Z axis kind of came off. But yeah, I think overall it did pretty well. I did speed it up to like 150%. So I think... When you're doing MDF, you can definitely turn the feed rate up a bit. But uh, I kind of, this is not the G-code they they supplied. I kind of thought that I had to do the inner circles with the outer and then the outer with the inner. If you know, you know. But that's definitely not what I wanted to do. I should have done the opposite like I was originally going to do. But you live and you learn. That's why we have this test piece. So I want to try to find, I have an idea for something I want to make. So I'll probably be another video of my first project with it, but. I'd say this is a success. Dust collection did all right. Need to lower that a little bit. But other than that, it prints. Thanks for watching. For more CNC videos, subscribe. And maybe we'll work on that sometime soon. I'm not going to brag or anything, but I'm getting pretty good at this. Yikes. Look at this cool little game you can play whenever your machine's idle this is what you get with open source stuff you don't get this with that high priced fancy crap i mean this is still three grand but still open source is always the best source i'm not gonna brag or anything but i'm getting pretty good at this yikes